guys, Saturn Loons here, and today I'm going to be filming a tutorial for this super cute Lumigurumi squid, which is designed by Zimmy underscore Looms on Instagram. Thank you so much, Zimmy, for letting me film another one of your designs. This, I think I have like one more design to film for her, and then I have one original design to film, and then... I'm thinking about doing like a collection tour or storage tour as well. So not too much left to film for like what I've been wanting to film because then school is coming up and I'm not gonna have very much time to film. So I'm trying to get it all done this summer. It's, school starts in September for me. So yeah, I love this design so much. It's so cute. I love this little tentacles. <laughs> It looks like the squid from Finding Nemo a lot. Well, enough blabbing. Let's get into the materials you'll be needing to make this cutie. So of course you'll be needing any type of hook, using my rain balloon hook as always. A C-clipper stitch marker, using a C-clip today as always. Before I forget, I will mention you need stuffing, cotton balls, polyfill, I use polyfill. Um, you will need uh, two 8mm safety eyes without backings or with backings, whichever you prefer, but these do not have backings. And if you want to add the mouth, I, have, I cut one black rubber band and it is hot glued on. Or you can like tie it on or whatever. And then for bands, I am using uh, Jelly Purple from the Rainbow Loom Web Store. Uh, it takes about a pack, an entire 600 pack of bands. I didn't do like the exact band count, but after I finished this guy, I had like, I don't know, 50 left. Not very much. So have at least an entire pack with you. I use Jelly Orange from the Rainbow Loom Web Store on this one, if you're wondering. But anyway, let's get started with the process of making this guy. So to start off, we are going to make the little tentacles first, and you're going to need eight of them, or you could do ten because they have eight tentacles and two like arm things, but I'm going to be doing eight. So I have already made seven off camera, and I'm going to make one with you, and then you guys can pause the video and make your additional seven or however many you want. You want to make... So I'm gonna get my bands and zoom in. So first we are going to start by doubling a cap band on your hook. So you're gonna take your band and then twist it. So you have two loops on your hook. And then you're going to chain up 12 bands. So we're gonna take one band and we're going to pull this cap band onto the, this band and then reclaim. And we're gonna repeat that 11 more times. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And then we're going to take a band and we're going to pull it through our, the band on our hook. And instead of chaining another one, we are going to loosely slip knot it, but enough that it won't come undone. So you should have something that looks like this. Then you're gonna turn around and go back to the cap band and put your hook through and you're going to take a band and pull it through the cap band and then put the back loop over the front loop and don't pull and you're going to go back into the cap band and do that same thing again but we're not going to pull this back band through we're just going to pull it through these two and then pull the back two loops over the front one like that. And now we're going to go into the next chain, so not the cap band, and do that same thing again. 
We're gonna pull a band through just the the band the the chain, and then put the back two over the front one. And then we're gonna go back into the chain and do that again. So basically, we are if you are like not new to Lumigurumi, we're just doing an increase up the chain. But now, after you've done two, you're going to go into the next chain and do that again. So you're gonna put two stitches in each chain. And last time I did a video, I did, um, Oh, the tutorial for the gnome, which I've seen so many gnomes. So thank you guys so much for watching my tutorials. And me and Zimmy love seeing your gnomes. Uh, uh, oh, the band, the yellow bands I used were very uncamera friendly. I complained about that a ton. But I made sure that these bands were camera friendly and you could see what I was doing. But... These are also going to be going up on my Etsy, Saturn Looms. And while I'm finishing up the, my increase, I'm going super slow because I'm like talking while I'm doing it also. But thank you guys so much for 1K subscribers here on YouTube. It really means a lot to me. I literally wouldn't even be here like without all your support. It really motivates me to do videos, even though today I was very unmotivated to film. But I knew I had to film this tutorial soon. And I had already made the, all the tentacles for it. So I was like, I gotta film. But once I get into it, it's all fine. Oh, kind of Finish up. It's a little hard to use jelly bands because they are a little bit harder to work with. But, and thank you to my loom bro at Olympus underscore duh underscore loomer. If, yeah, that's his user. Yeah, Olympus still loomer. Um, my loom bro for helping me with my YouTube for the past year. Literally, I just had my one year YouTube anniversary. So, yay. So, once you get to this top chain, we are going to still put two chains or two bands. And then we are going to undo the slip knot from when we tied off in the beginning. And then take one end of the band and pull it through the loop on your hook. And then slip knot. Not too tightly, but you're because you're gonna undo it later, but just so it holds. And then it like curls kind of like this. So I want you guys to pause the video and make uh seven more um of your tentacles or how many ever how many however many you want to make and come back to me when you're done okay so after you finished your tentacles we're going to move on to the body part so it's this part down and then we add this part and the thing around at the end and the tentacles are also at the end oh it's so cute so i'm going to try to go a little faster than i did with those tentacles i took forever on that I was talking though, so I hope I have enough of this purple. I have more downstairs, but I don't really feel like having to go downstairs and get it. Okay, so to start off the squid, we are going to do a magic ring of six stitches. And if you don't know how to make a magic ring, then I'll show you. So we're gonna take a band and wrap it around your hook three times. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> you're gonna wrap it around three times or two times depending on how many you times you count the loop so we're going to go one and two so if there's three loops on your hook and take another band and pull it through all the loops on your hook and reclaim and put the back loop over the front loop and then we're gonna go back into the cap band and pull a band through just the three loops and not this back one and put the back two loops over the front one. Oops. 
and then we're gonna go back into the cap band and repeat that four more times. So through the three loops, and then the back two or the front. Ugh, these jelly bands. Kind of regret it now, but I love the color. It's like perfect for a squid. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The stitches are these teardrop shapes and you always start the one on your hook. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. And once you have six stitches, you are going to get your C clip. Where did I put mine? This is why I usually bring up multiple C-clips for filming. I usually lose it. Well, I will be right back. <laughs> I gotta go get another C-clip. Okay, I just grabbed a ton of C-clips, so I won't lose it. Once you... <laughs> Sorry. I'm out of breath. Because I ran up the stairs. So you're gonna put your C-clip to the band that's on your hook. I also grabbed more purple. And now we are going to do a single row around. So instead of going into the cap band, we're gonna go into this first stitch. N not this loop here, this is just part of the first stitch. It's not a stitch, it's like facing the other way. So we're gonna go into the stitch. And just like we did with the mat or with the cap band, we're just gonna pull it through these two loops and then put the back two over the, the back two loops over the front loop. I'm gonna do, go into the next stitch, do the same thing. And you should have six stitches when you're done because we haven't done any increasing or decreasing. Then we're going to move our C-clip up like that. And now we are going to do single and an increase around. So we're gonna go into the first stitch and do a single like we were just doing. And then the next stitch, we're gonna do an increase. So we are going to put two bands in the stitch. So there's one, and then we're gonna go back into that same loop and do another stitch. And then we're gonna do the next one, do a single, and the next one, an increase. Oh, these jelly bands. And then single, and an increase. Should end on an increase. Trying to stay in frame. It's so quiet. There's like no cars going down my street right now. So now you should have nine stitches. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we're gonna do a single row around. Just looming a little faster just to save filming time and we've done single rows before so no need to explain no increasing or no decreasing Move your C-clip up, it's, you should still have nine stitches. And now we're going to do single, single increase, which should give you 12 stitches. So there's a little bit of a pattern here. So we're gonna do two single stitches. And then an increase. And 
Then two symbols. And an increase. I'm really trying to make sure that my fingers aren't in the way. Because when I loom, I always have my pointer finger like on top of the stitch. You should end with an increase. And um, your next row is going to be a single row. Just stay in. Move your C-clip, oh. Move your C-clip up. <laughs> and then, like I said, we're gonna do a single row with of 12, because you have 12 stitches. Um, I was gonna say earlier, but totally forgot. Wait, give me a second to remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> I need to, oh. I've been getting such positive feedback about my tutorials because I feel like they're not that good. I mean, I've definitely improved, but like, I feel like the lighting and my fingers and me being slow. I'm, I literally, I'm telling you, I'm not this slow. I know I'm so slow in tutorials. It's just the position I'm sitting in with my arms out like this and trying to stay in frame. Like, usually I like have my loom stuff like close to my body on my lap looming, so. I promise that I'm going to try very hard now to improve my videos. Now that I'm really starting to pick up people that like to watch my videos. So, gotta make them good for you guys. So now you should have 12 stitches. And now we are going to do three singles and an increase, which should give you 15, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. So we're gonna do one single stitch without being in frame. Two, three, and then an increase. So we're increasing on every fourth, technically. But it's just three singles and an increase. And this, like, gives it like the cone shape at the top. One, two, three, increase. I know that most loomers usually, like if you're like an experienced loomer, will usually just like listen to what I'm saying and not necessarily watch the tutorial, like with my fingers in the way of all my looming. So I'm hoping if you're a beginner, then... I mean, it's a pretty easy design, I'd say. Maybe not for your first ever Lumigurumi, but... You should end with an increase also. But it is pretty easy. It's just a little band heavy, just because of the tentacles. The body th part itself is not band heavy. Okay, so you should have... Let me just count. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I was right. <laughs> So now we're gonna do a single row around. But yeah, I'm really trying to not have my fingers in the way. I'm really sorry, guys. I've also been saying things about how I think my voice is annoying, <laughs> like when I talk too much, cause it's just, it gets scratchy and I know that. But you guys say it's not annoying, so that makes me feel good. And the positive feedback really does give me motivation. So thank you guys. Yeah, I think I have two more tutorials on my list to film. I did have three, but I tried making one of the, the designs and it did not turn out well. <laughs> I did not like it. So I am don't think I'm gonna be filming for that. Ah. But I have an original design and then one of Zimmy's designs. Zimmy's, I've done so many of Zimmy's designs. I'm literally obsessed. She's like one of my favorite loomers. She also has a YouTube channel and she's starting to do some tutorials now too. So I will have all her links in the description. So go follow her. Um, and now you should still have 15. And now we're going to do four singles and an increase. And this is like the last row of increasing. So yay. So we're gonna do one, two, three, 
and four, and then an increase. Loki looks like the gnome hat, <laughs> except it, the gnome hat started out like smaller. I was matching a four, not a six. It was a lot more annoying in the beginning of the gnome, just how, of how small it is. <laughs> I'm also thinking about doing a giveaway soon. Gin uh, Ginger, you, if you're like a loomer, then you know who I'm talking about. Ginger did a summer contest and I was inspired by that. And I think I'm gonna do my own giveaway to like celebrate 1K, I guess. Maybe when I hit 1K on Instagram, I'll do a giveaway. So go follow my Instagram at Saturn.looms. And then I'll, once I hit 1K, I will do a giveaway. And I, w I wasn't thinking of doing like ban a band giveaway, more like a creation giveaway where I make stuff and then like you guys win like creations that I've made. Also you should have 18 stitches after this. Gosh, it's taking me 10 minutes to make this piece. Dude. <laughs> so you should have 18 stitches. I'm not gonna count because I know I have 18. But now comes a bit of a repetitive part. So we're gonna do six rows of single crochet, but for the first row, we're going to do it on the inside loop only. So we're gonna go into the stitch and instead of grabbing both loops, we're only gonna grab the inside loop. And we're gonna do a stitch on that. So only the inside. And we're not increasing or decreasing. There's no more increasing in this design. The tentacles is like all increasing though, so. The tentacles do take some time. I'm gonna do my um, annual video guessing how long it's gonna be. I'm guessing this is gonna be like 50 minutes maybe. But we'll see. I'm filming this on a Monday and I'm assuming it's gonna be posted on, on Tuesday. Maybe Monday, I don't know. I still need to get a thumbnail. And if it's not sunny, then I might just use one of my, oh gosh, I'm not in frame. One of my old photos of the squid as like a temporary thumbnail, but in the morning tomorrow, I'll probably take a thumbnail. If it's sunny, I only take pictures if it's sunny. That's like the thing I do. I don't take pictures unless it's sunny. But in the winter, that might be a little harder, so. That's why I do hate about winter is taking photos is so hard because it's so boring. It's just snow and dead grass. Also, I just like let go of my stitch. Because I was talking and not paying attention. Also, jelly bands. Low-key regret using jelly bands, but I want to put it on my Etsy and I like how the jelly looks Okay, so once you've completed your row of the inside loop only You still have 18 and it does look like it's closing in But it's not like but your creation is not closing up. It's just how it looks and I'm actually gonna add a little bit of stuffing right now Just so it gets up in the tip and you do not want to overstuff this. Usually you can see a little bit of the stuffing through the stitches, if it's at, at least if it's jelly bands. Usually with opaque bands, you can't, but I have noticed with jelly that you can see the stuffing through the stitches a bit. Mm, sorry. just up in the tip I just wanted to stuff that kind of look like a crayon tip or something <laughs> okay so now we're going to do five rows of single crochet in both loops this time which is it's kind of repetitive but I'll do one row with you guys and then go off camera and finish my additional four so I'm just gonna plot out my five rows and I grab one band at the start of each row. But usually when I loom, when I'm not filming, I just count in my head. I don't usually lay the bands out like this anymore. 
but now we're going to go into both loops and not just the inside loop. And we're just doing single stitches around. I can talk for this row. Um, no idea. <laughs> I've already talked a bunch in this video. Oh, I'm going live. If you see this, like, like a few days before I post, uh, a, a little bit after I post it, because I'm I'm going live on Wednesday, um, August. 17th to open a trade with one of my best friends bando boy looms on instagram we have been in the prog process of doing an art trade for the last like month and we finally almost well i have her she, she, she has mine but my her part of the trade is arriving for me tomorrow. So on Wednesday, we're gonna go live and open them. I'm really excited because she does like dragons and stuff. And I do Lumigrimi, so it's like a good trade off. And she's just so sweet. Guys, go follow her at bando underscore underscore bleh, underscore boy underscore looms is her Insta. Oh my gosh, this segment is 15 minutes long already. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I really try to keep my tutorials as short as possible. Because I know that watching tutorials can be a little annoying sometimes. But it's all good. So I did one row and which, out of five. So I want you guys to pause the video. Ah, keep on my tripod. And do four more rows. And I'm going to go off camera and do four more rows. And come back to me when you're done. Okay, I am back, guys, and I finished my additional four rows. And it should be looking something like this. It literally looks like a purple gnome. <laughs> it's really funny. So, I'm going to actually stuff mine a little bit more right now. Not fully, just a little bit more. And now we're going to do single decrease around. So you guys know how to do a single. I'm gonna zoom in so I can show you the decrease. So a decrease is basically combining two stitches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the front half of the first loop and the back half of the next loop and pull a band through these two and stitch like normal. We're gonna do single. And then front half of the first loop, the back half of the next loop, and stitch. We do that all the way around, and then we're gonna have 12 stitches. Very happy with how this color looks on camera. After that gnome video, I really gotta make sure that my colors are camera friendly i mean so many people made the gnome so i'm assuming that it was understandable just might have been annoying to see the gnome color maybe it was just me who thought it was annoying i don't even know because all you do is all you guys do is mostly comment nice things so and now we're going to do a decrease around and in this row you can add your tentacles like in the stitches but that's not how i do it because i like to add the tentacles like around like the edge you can see so you can if you want but i'm not going to and also if you wanted to add backing on onto your eyes you can do that now and also the mouth also you're going to want to add the rest of your stuffing now A big chunk like this, you just have to like whip apart the fibers. That's why I like polyfill better than cotton balls. I hate ripping of cotton balls, it gives me the heebie jeebies. But yeah, like I said, you're not gonna want to overstuff it.
But then you don't want to understuff it because then it's squishy, like too squishy. Usually I go overboard with my stuffing. I won't lie about that, but I try to not to go overboard, especially in tutorials. Okay, I think I like So now we're just going to do decreases around. So just every single stitch that you do is going to be a decrease. Technically until closed, but if you wanted to add your tentacles, you can. But I will not be doing that. Like, I got those four rows done, like, so quick. It took me, like, five minutes because I was off camera and I had my looming in the position that I always do with like close to my body kind of thing. So I promise. I feel bad that I am not able to loom super fast on camera. You can always speed up the video, but then my voice will sound like, <laughs> like really fast. Oh, once you finish that, you don't have to, you can just get rid of your C-clip. You don't need it anymore. And now we're just going to decrease everything until closed or you can like tie on a band and sew it through the top. I used to do that, but I have found that just a decreasing until close just gives it a cleaner look. I've learned a lot in my journey of looming of to messed up magic rings, to closing and to sewing and slip knotting and all that good stuff. It's actually pretty recently that I realized I was doing my magic rings wrong. <laughs> that was pretty funny though, that I have been doing it lot wrong for so long. I was like making one stitch face the opposite way. Oh, I didn't even show you. I just slip knotted this closed. <laughs> pull, you pull all the a band through all the bands that are on, loops that are on your hook and then slip knot and then I tuck it in. Sorry, I didn't even show that, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I think I like how that looks. I don't think that's overstuffed. Okay. No, it looks fine. Okay. So now we're going to do this part here. And then I add the eyes, and then this thingy, and then the tentacles I do last. Well, I do the mouth last, but I'm probably not going to glue the mouth on. I'll do like that after I'm done filming, because I'm not going to go glue it on, then come back up and do the outro. So Squid is not going to have a mouth for the outro, okay? So what we're going to do is just choose a spot where we did the half row. You can see that this one loop is like different than the rest. So we're gonna go through the top half that is sticking up and we are going to chain two bands. So one and two. We're gonna go into the next top loop and pull a band through everything and then chain one. And then we're gonna go into the next loop, the top half, pull a band through everything, and then chain one. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. And it gives it like a ruffled kind of look. One, two. Make sure you're only going to the top half of the loop, not both. And chain. Pull through all. And chain. This is definitely a favorite design of Zimmy's. It's just so cute and it's really easy. So it's like, well, it's easy for, for me, at least I can say. And they're pretty quick, except for the part or when you have to make all the little tentacles. That's time consuming. And the band count. 
or it's pretty band heavy, so that's another downside, but I think it's worth it. It's really cute. Almost there. It also usually shocks me at how fast you guys make the things that are on my channel. Like, I upload it, and then usually by the next day, there's, like, one or two people who have already made it. <laughs> Which is funny that you guys have just the time to, as soon as somebody posts it, you can sit down and make it. I'm usually, I, I haven't made something for myself in, like, a long time, honestly. Except for all the ginger cell entries, I kept a good amount of those for my collection. Like, I have it just for in my free time. Oh, I'm gonna make something for my collection that I want. It's all been for collabs, for ginger's contests, and I made a pineapple. Like, basically designing something that I was gonna put in my Etsy orders as, like, freebies. So... I just I technically wasn't designing it for myself. I was just like designing it so I could use it, but then I kept it because because but everything I've been making is for my Etsy. So I'd really appreciate you if you could check that out and maybe support my small business. It's really hard to do a small business like during school. So I've been trying to do a ton during the summer. Okay. So, I've gotten to my last stitch, and I chained up two, and I'm just gonna go somewhere above the last stitch and just tie it off. Like that. And then you can tuck in your tail. There's a lot of tail tucking for the tentacles. Okay, I'm gonna add my eyes now, just so I can have the placement for the little top, the thing that goes across here. If you're adding safety eyes, I added mine one, two, three, four rows down. Perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna do this thingy. So, basically, okay. Get the rest of my bands. Definitely would have run out if I hadn't grabbed that handful. Okay, you do not need a clip. So we're going to go to the magic ring, and this is why I added my eyes. Oh, I had them really close to this thing. Usually I like to have this part in the back. I can move my eyes. Sorry, guys. Okay, now it's more towards the back. So we're going to go in the magic ring. I'm going to go to one side, I'm gonna put our hook through the cap band of the magic ring. Sometimes this can be a little tricky. Okay. And we're going to pull a band through and then stitch. And then we're going to stitch down the side. So we'll just find a spot, pull a band through. And just do your normal single crochet down the side. There's not really a specific amount of stitches that I do just until I get to the bottom. Eh. This part is tricky with the jelly bands I will say. I 
I go right to the edge of the, where the crown, or this thing is. Ugh, the jelly bands are killing me. But they look so good. Okay. So, one sec, just checking what I have to do. One moment, I need to check the pattern. I thought I had it memorized. I had it mostly memorized, but... I guess not entirely. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to turn our hook. And if you don't care what way the stitches face, you can go in from this way, but I do care. So I'm going to go through the back and we're going to do single crochets all the way up. Like I said, I do care how the stitches face. So I'm just doing it the opposite way. And we are going to do a stitch in the first little loop here. Like that. Then we're going to take our hook out, flip, and then we're gonna do one decrease. So front part of the first loop, back part of the next loop, Decrease and then single crochets all the way down and then we'll slip knot it. I'd say this is probably the hardest part. But it's not too hard. It's hard. the hardest part, but it's not that hard. And then the, where I tie off is at this like straight band right here. Like that. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So we're gonna go in the magic ring. Sorry, this segment is already really long. And we're gonna just stitch down. She found a new show to watch. I know I probably haven't talked about it. I am obsessed with Stranger Things. I've watched it four times, all four seasons. Not gonna spoil anything, but it's really good. I'm so excited for season five. Um, but I'm like, I need to stop re-watching it. So I am now watching Lock and Key. It's on Netflix. And it's like the exact kind of show that I like to watch, so I've been loving it like a mystery kind of thing adventure okay so now flip your hook and do single crochets all the way up I think I did more stitches on this side than the other it doesn't really matter but if you want to do the same amount just count <laughs> but I don't really care it looks cute no matter what also, if you don't have safety eyes, you can like slip knot beads on. I don't have an exact placement for them like while you're doing the design. So don't forget to go in the little slip stitch at the top. Sorry, I'm trying to show it. It's like really hard to see though. Then we're gonna flip and do our decrease and then single crochets all the way down and then uh tie it off. Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> Very random. Oh my gosh, this segment is 17 minutes. After I'm done with this, I'll probably do it just a separate segment for the tentacles, because sometimes uploading such big segments can take a long time. This side is definitely longer than the other one. 
Sorry, I'm not in frame. And then Slipknot. And you can tuck those in. Oh yeah, this one's definitely longer. Like that. And I'll tuck my tails in real quick. And then I'll show you one other step I do. You don't have to do this, but I find it, I like to do it. Actually, I'm not gonna tuck the tails in. So at the top here, I like kind of attach the two pieces. So it's like not like straight flat kind of weird. I just like went through some a stitch. Did a single and then go through the top of this. And did another single. And then I just kind of did a decrease with just some random random bands and then tie off. You don't have to do that. Or you can just do a different way than I did it, because I know I probably didn't explain that very well. But I just did that to attach it more, I guess. I'm gonna go off camera just to tuck in my tails, just because it's easier to do it off camera. And then I will come back and show you how to attach the tentacles. Okay, so I tucked my tails in. Sorry, I was a little bit flustered at the end of that clip. I get pretty... I can't sit still. For, it's hard for me to sit still for so long. And towards the end of tutorials, I just want to get it done. So, sorry about that. So, now we're going to attach the tentacles. So, I like to just go around, like, the edge. Like, right here. And attach. Because I feel like, think it just looks best. And I just go around the outside. So, we're going to undo the loose slip knot on the tentacle. Pull it through and just slip knot. And then we're gonna just do that all the way around. Leave a decent amount of space or like a stitch or like a stitch or two in between each like place where you tie on your tentacle. Cause then you want it to be like pretty evenly spaced out. I usually do one stitch. But tie them wherever you want. I just, this is where I do it. You know what, I want somebody to do a rainbow squid. I think that would be really cute. Tag me if you make a rainbow squid, I wanna see it. <laughs> well, tag me if you make a, tag me and Zimmy if you make a squid, we both wanna see it. No matter what color it is. But a rain, I should make a rainbow jelly squid. That would be really cute. first squid I made I attached the tentacles like way too close to the center so I like did like double the amount of slip knots to slip knot like parts of it closer to like the top that made no sense but like I basically doubled the amount of work for myself last time I made a squid like the first one I ever did and that was the tail tucking was so annoying it's really annoying to just do this many but then I did double the amount so double the amount of work for myself by not tying it in the correct place well there's not really correct place in but for me i'm a perfectionist so i like it to be like in the exact spot that i want okay last one okay so i tied on on my tentacles it looks uh, adorable love this color and I'm gonna go off camera to tuck in all the tails just because it's very hard to do on camera and I will be back to do the outro oh so cute okay I tucked in all my tails make sure you don't miss any when you are tucking in your tails and I love how this squid turned out it'll look even cuter with my mouth glued on I'm not gonna glue it on right now but I will after the tutorial so the thumbnail will have the mouth. So I hope your guys' squids turned out good. I hope the tutorial was good. And if you make one, don't forget to tag me on Instagram at Saturn.looms and Zimmy at Zimmy underscore looms. I use the hashtag Saturn looms and Zimmy looms. 
we would love to see it. And hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!